In this video, we are going to take some sample practice questions on AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. Now friends, AWS Cloud Practitioner exam is one sure shot way for you to start building a promising career in cloud computing. And the best part is that you are starting with AWS, which is the leading cloud provider in the industry. So friends, in case you are also preparing for the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam and you think that your preparations are done, you are through with the course content, then this video gives you a chance to test your knowledge and understanding of the AWS concepts against the real exam like questions. And of course, through these videos, you will understand the core AWS concepts. And not just that, I will also share some AWS documentation so that you can do some self-learning and also validate the answer. So what are we waiting for? Let's jump on to the very first question. So here comes the very first question for today, question number 181 part 21. The question is saying that in order to ensure that all the users of a global marketing application running on the AWS cloud are able to access and watch videos quickly with minimal latency, which service should the company use? Option R, Option A, AWS Auto Scaling, Option B, Amazon Kinesis Video Streams, Option C, Elastic Load Balancing, and Option D, Amazon Cloud Front. And friends, the correct answer is option D, Amazon CloudFront. Now friends, I took multiple related questions with this concept, Amazon CloudFront in part 20 and part 19 as well. So please do check out the previous parts so that you are covering the entire concept and also the wide range of the sample practice questions. But for now, for this episode, I have got some important documentation on Amazon CloudFront. And here you can read that the Amazon CloudFront is a web-based service that speeds up the distribution of your static and dynamic web content such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript, images to your users. So here my friends, the concept is very similar to the cache. So cache is a concept, a temporary storage where you store your files, your images or maybe your videos for a faster content delivery. And here you can read that the Amazon CloudFront delivers your content through a worldwide network of data centers called Edge Location. So please understand both the concepts Edge Location and Amazon CloudFront. And here I want to show you one more documentation so that you can understand the use cases of the CloudFront. Here you can see that the Amazon CloudFront once again can help you accomplish a variety of the goals. So first of all, it helps you accelerate the static website content delivery. It also helps you serve the videos on demand and live streaming videos and then helps you encrypt the specific feed throughout the system processing. And not only that, you can also customize at the edge and serve private content by using Lambda at the rate edge customization. So please understand and read both these documentation to really grasp the concept of Amazon CloudFront edge location so that you are also enabled when you actually work on the Amazon. Because these days, my friends, no matter which company or the organization, big or small you're working with, they will always have a website. And not only the companies, my friends, even individuals, for example, I have two websites. So that's what I'm trying to say. Everyone has a website these days and you should always know how to deliver the content faster. And with that, let's jump on to the next question. Question number 182 that says, which of the following tasks is required to deploy a PCI compliant workload on AWS? Now let's check out the option. Option A, use any AWS service and implement PCI controls at the application layer. Option B, use an AWS service that is in scope for PCI compliance and raise an AWS support ticket to enable PCI compliance at the application layer. Then we have option C that says use any AWS service and raise AWS support ticket to enable PCI compliance on that particular service. And then we have option D use an AWS service that is in scope for PCI compliance and apply PCI controls at the application layer. So you can see all these options are very confusing and also very closely worded. So it's very confusing to understand all the concepts. So let me tell you the correct answer first and then we will check some documentation. So the correct answer is option D use an AWS service that is in scope for the PCI compliance and apply the PCI controls at the application layer. And friends to understand what is PCI control, how does it work? This is the documentation. Here you can read that the payment card industry data security standard, which is also known as PCI DSS is a proprietary information security standard administered by the PCI Security Standard Council. And I'm sure you're already paying attention to the big names here. You can see American Express, Discover Financial Services, JCB International, MasterCard Worldwide, 
and also Visa and corporations. And I'm sure these big names are already telling you that how important this concept is. Now let's move on to the next question. Question number 183. It says that to make programmatic calls to AWS, a user was provided with the access key ID and a secret access key. However, the user has now forgotten the shared credentials and cannot make the required programmatic calls. How can the access key ID and the secret access key can be provided to the user? Here you can see four options given. The first option is use forget password option. Option B is use create new access key by logging into the AWS management console as a root user. Then we have option C credentials cannot be regenerated and then option D raise a ticket with AWS support. So what do you think my friends? What will you do in case some of your user has forgotten the shared credentials? Well, the correct answer is option B that in this case you can use the create new access key by logging into the AWS management console as a root user. And once again, I want to emphasize that you must be root user in order to create a new access key. And here we have question number 184 that says what is the AWS well architected frameworks key area of emphasis when it comes to ensuring a system can recover from a service or infrastructure disruptions and dynamically acquire computing resources as needed. Options given are option A security, option B reliability, option C performance efficiency and option D cost optimization. Now friends, let me suggest you one thing in these kind of question, just think very logically. So the core concept or ask of the question that your system must be reliable. And that's why option B reliability is the correct answer because you can see it has nothing to do with the security and also performance efficiency is not the correct option because we are not talking about any performance enhancement and then cost optimization. Well, it's quite evident that the cost optimization has nothing to do with recovery of the system. So that's why the only correct answer or only fit answer is reliability. And let me tell you one thing, my friends, you will definitely get some questions from the AWS well architected framework. And that's why I cannot leave you without the documentation. So here you can read that the reliability pillar encompasses the ability of the workload to perform its intended function correctly and consistently when it is expected to. And this includes the ability to operate and test the workload throughout its total life cycle. And similarly, my friends, in case you want to read all about the well architected framework, what are the different principles, you can always come back to this documentation. So here you can read all about the various key concepts and design principles of AWS well architected framework. So there are six pillars and you must know all of these. And this brings us to the question number 185 that says a user is comparing purchase options for an application that runs on Amazon EC2 and Amazon RDS. Now the application cannot sustain any interruption. The application experiences a predictable amount of usage including some seasonal spikes that last only a few weeks at any given point of time. It is not possible to modify the application which purchase options meet these requirements most cost effectively. And your options are option A, review the AWS marketplace and buy partial upfront reserve instances to cover the predicted and seasonal load. And then we have option B, buy the reserve instances from the predicted amount of usage throughout the year and allow any seasonal usage to run on spot instances. And then we have option C, buy reserve instances for the predicted amount of usage throughout the year and allow any seasonal usage to run at an on demand rate. And then we have option D buy the reserve instances to cover all potential usage that results from seasonal usage. And friends, this question has a very important concept that you can see in the option B and C. So in the option B, we are given with the spot instances while in the option C, we are given with on demand rate. Well, first, let me reveal the answer. The correct answer is option C where you are given with the on demand rate. Now let's understand why we have not picked spot instances. So let's first understand what exactly are spot instances. It's a very important concept. And here you can see that the spot instances save up to 90% on on demand prices. Now you might be wondering even if the spot instances are 90% cheaper, why we have not picked the same. And the answer lies in this documentation. Here you can read that the spot instances are a cost effective choice if you can be flexible about when your application run and if your application can be interrupted. For example, spot instances are well suited for the data analysis, bad jobs, background processing and optional tasks. 
So here my friends, you can understand that even if the spot instances are 90% cheaper from the on demand pricing, but then the spot instances are suitable for the application that can sustain the interruptions and the examples of such applications are also given here. But then in this question, it's clearly mentioned that the application cannot sustain any interruptions. That's why we have picked on demand rate. So friends, I hope you like the five questions that we covered today. In case you have any doubt in any question, do let me know in the comment section. And in case you're looking for the PDF file of any of our videos or any of our weekend exam cram, first you can email us at connectors at the rate the techblackboard.com and secondly, you can join our membership community. In case you have any questions around the membership community, what are the benefits? Do let me know. You can reach out to us on the same email ID. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.